Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, today we celebrate the memorial of St. Agnes, virgin and martyr, who gave up her young life at the age of 12 or 13 years of age to give witness to her faith and to preserve her innocence. Uh, she desired to follow that gospel teaching, Matthew 19, 12, when our Lord said, some are incapable of marriage because they were born so, some because they were made so by others, some because they have renounced marriage for the sake of the kingdom of heaven. Whoever can accept this ought to accept it. Agnes was beautiful and she was desired by many suitors. Even at her young age, there were proposals for her marriage, but she wanted to save herself for Christ. She wanted to give herself to Christ for the sake of the kingdom of heaven, which of course uh, is an act of great charity. First of all, uh, for our Lord, whose example she imitates, giving herself, conserving herself completely for God. And it's also charity towards neighbor in that she, first of all, in this desire for virginity, wants to serve the kingdom, wants her life to be an offering for the building up of the kingdom of heaven and the salvation of souls. And then, of course, in laying down her life, gives that supreme witness to the truth of the faith. St. Ambrose, the bishop and doctor of the church, called or described her, her death as, she called him her one victim of a twin martyrdom, and that is the martyrdom for the faith, or the truth of the religion. She laid down her life for the truth of the religion. She was commanded to burn incense to the idols. This is in the time of the Roman persecutions, which she refused to do. Rather, she traced the sign of the cross on the idol's altar. And, of course, then she also laid down her life for the sake of modesty or purity or chastity. In the Catechism of the Catholic Church, martyrdom is described uh, under the Eighth Commandment in the section that talks about the Eighth Commandment, which itself falls under a section called, You Shall Love Your Neighbor As Yourself. So the Eighth Commandment says, You shall not bear false witness against your neighbor. And it forbids misrepresenting the truth in our relations with others. This moral prescription flows from the vocation of the holy people to bear witness to their God, who is the truth and wills the truth. Offenses against the truth expressed or expressed by word or deed a refusal to commit oneself to moral uprightness. They are fundamental infidelities to God, and in this sense they undermine the foundations of the covenant. Catechism of the Catholic Church, number 2464. And the two sections that come after that are living in the truth and to bear witness to the truth. So as we just heard, this is the, holy, the vocation of God's holy people is to bear witness to the truth that he is and that he revealed to us. And we do that by the example of our life and our lives should be an imitation of the example of Christ as Agnes witnessed with her life and the way she lived and the choices she made. And then we bear witness to the truth by the confession of our faith not just in our deeds, but also in word if necessary. And it is necessary because that's uh, our obligation to participate in the life of the church, is to witness to the gospel. We live in a secular culture which 
refuses any meaningful reference to God and to his transcendent law. And so the entire culture, in a certain sense, is an offense against the truth. Especially when our culture expresses and manifests beliefs and behavior that is contrary to the Christian religion. The Christian religion, for those of us who have faith, is the highest truth revealed by God to man for the salvation of our immortal souls. And thus, this religion revealed by God himself to us is the foundation of perfect morality. Catholic, the Catholic Church upholds the importance of natural law. And so morality is not dependent on revelation. At least much of morality is simply a fact of the true nature of things that we can know even if we don't know the faith. But with the faith comes the perfect completion of morality and the whole foundation for morality is revealed in God and through God to us. And since the secular culture denies this, we Christians have an obligation to witness against that falsehood. Many hundreds of thousands did so this last Friday in Washington when they marched for life. And much of the secular world and the media that uh, supposedly exists to inform us of the truth and of current events just simply ignores it or falsely portrays it and focuses on the handful of protesters or counter-protesters, especially pushed by an organization called Planned Parenthood, which professes a culture entirely contrary to Christian morality and doesn't just profess this, but seeks to indoctrinate the youth in schools at the youngest ages. And so this is an offense against the truth of real morality, and it is an attack on the salvation of immortal souls. And little Agnes, at the age of 13, perhaps uh, grasped these truths. Certainly her, her heart was given to Christ, and she would let nothing take her away from him. And so she laid down her life as a witness and in, as a victim for the building up of this kingdom that we all have an obligation to give our witness to and also lay down our lives in imitation of Christ, either in a white martyrdom of adherence to Christian principles and morality, or if necessary, if pushed to choose between uh, this world and this worldly life, or our eternal salvation, then we must lay down our lives in favor of salvation. So may St. Agnes, by her example and with her prayers, uh, inspire us and obtain for us the grace to also make of our lives a, a twin martyrdom of witness for the kingdom, renouncing the world and its pleasures for those can make this choice, and may we all be witnesses to the truth of, of and the beauty of God's plan for uh, sexuality, for chastity for all, unmarried and married as well, properly understood, and may we always keep as our highest priority uh, the salvation of our soul and the souls of others. Praise be Jesus and Mary.